the eight worldly dharma refer to eight um, attitude or disturbance uh, which uh, are keeping us away actually from uh, inner peace and by doing so they are keeping us away from the possibility to reach um, Shine and to go further towards enlightenment. Thus, it is important to know them and especially to know how uh, to not be affected by them. They have been uh, mentioned, uh, I believe, uh, I don't know first, but uh, as far as I remember, in the text um, from Nagarjuna, which uh, is a letter to a friend, which is a text from um, first, second century, uh, a text which has 123, I think, uh, paragraph, and if my memory do not fail me, it is on the chapter or the paragraph 29 that um, it is uh, made a reference to um, the uh, eight uh, worldly dharma. So in this text, we, we learn uh, or we start to learn about this uh, worldly dharma. Um, which is good to know which is good to remember, which is good uh, also to meditate upon, so to uh, remain in our daily life away from them, away from the disturbance which they are bringing us. This letter to a friend is, is not necessarily a monastic text because Nagarjuna was writing to, uh, to uh, a king so a layman and he is explaining uh, that um, by uh, falling into this uh, worldly uh, consideration one is uh, keeping away from the, the true practice and uh, keeping away from the possibility to have a, a pacified mind and without a pacified mind of course everything else becomes uh, become uh, complicated so the first, uh, the first of the eight worldly dharma is um, happiness and uh, and suffering, or happiness and unhappiness. So our hope uh, for uh, happiness, uh, in more in the sense of uh, the hope for pleasure, the hope for uh, pleasant uh, things, pleasant events, pleasant uh, situations. And on the other side, the fear for um, pain, the fear for unhappiness, uh, the fear for every situation in which we do not uh, obtain uh, what we are expecting in terms of uh, pleasant experience. This uh, happiness this search for happiness and this fear for pain uh, participate actively on a daily basis i would say on an every hour basis uh, to our dissatisfaction so our mind is often disturbed is often um, not focused well enough is often placed in a situation where uh, we are passing from a thought to another very quickly instead of remaining focused on the present moment instead of remaining uh, focused on the motivation for which we uh, want to practice and um, Consequently, is uh, not allowing us to remain in a pacified state. This is really the focus on this eight worldly dharma: is to pacify the mind, how to remain in a state of pacified mind, and not to be taken away by uh, worldly 
uh, consideration. Uh, not to be taken away by any considerations or any state of mind from which we are not benefiting. So we have this hope for happiness and this uh, fear for uh, suffering or for unhappiness. We have this hope for fame and this uh, fear for um, being uh, insignificant or not being taken in consideration as well as we would like to be. There is this uh, hope for being uh, praised and this fear, of course, for uh, being blamed, uh, criticized. And there is this hope for uh, gain, uh, for obtaining things and uh, the opposite, this fear from uh, fear of uh, losing, fear of loss. Uh, these eight considerations, we need to meditate on them in order to recognize them as soon as they arise in our mind. And as soon as we observe them in our minds, then we can work upon them. We can uh, recognize that uh, they are empty considerations, they are disturbing considerations, and they are considerations we need to uh, we need to keep away from our mind. By keeping this uh, consideration away from the mind, the mind finds back a type of peace which cultivated will bring us to uh, the mental pacification and uh, from the mental pacification up to Shine. To keep this eight worldly dharma in mind and um, to be able to observe them and meditate on them, we need to develop awareness. We need to keep that awareness, which is not a, fact, a disturbing mental factor. It's not something that will uh, take our focus away. It is a um, function activated in the background of our consciousness, on the background of our mind, and which allow us to become aware of anything that disturbs the mind. When we are uh, comparing the mind with a lake or comparing the mind with a piece of water, we compare awareness as a little fish, little enough uh, to navigate under the surface of the water without to disturb it, without to bring any wave or any disturbance. This is the type of um, function we need to set in our mind. And since we are working a lot by um, habit, and we are working a lot by um, getting used to some actions or some activities to which we react, we need to uh, think often and often at the beginning about this type of awareness. We can, many times in the day, ask ourselves, Am I aware of what is happening in my mind? Am I conscious about what I'm thinking? Most of the time not. Most of the time we have uh, many different type of thoughts arising, many different type of uh, consideration which are overlapping each other and um, keeping our mind uh, quite disturbed. Having a mind quite disturbed at the end um, allows major disturbance to take place uh, without our uh, immediate um, understanding. So sometimes we realize that we have been angry for already some minutes or some time and uh, we did not um, we did not uh, see it because our mind was um, busy by many other type of unnecessary consideration so 
we need to come back to a state of mind focused and understanding what we are perceiving. We have six senses, five physical sense and one mental sense, and we are perceiving through these senses. We are entering in contact with our world through these senses, and we are reacting on the basis of what we perceive. We need to become aware of what we are perceiving and how we are moving toward this perception. It is important for the pacification of the mind, of course. It is important for uh, the law of causality. It is important for our karma. Our own karma is actually fed by the way we are reacting, the way we are projecting, considering, considering our reality. What we are surrounded with is the result of past accumulated causes. We have accumulated in the past a certain amount of causes, a lot of them, because as we are thinking, we create causes. So we create a lot of causes. And if we take in consideration all the past years of this life and all the previous life, lives, we have accumulated a lot of causes. All these causes are giving as a result what we are perceiving today. This we cannot change immediately. If uh, you see uh, somebody passing in your field of perception, if you see a car, if you see a truck, if you see an object, if you see an animal passing in, in your field of perception, in your reality, you cannot just change that. You cannot snap your finger and the object disappears. And uh, on the other side, you cannot uh, snap the finger and an object appears because your reality is the result of past accumulated causes manifesting constantly, or taking place constantly in front of you. In front of you being a matter of speech because it is uh, actually within, uh, within your mind. Um, this we cannot change immediately at least, but what we can change is the way we project on whatever we perceive the way we are taking things in consideration. I see a tree, I see a person, I see an animal, I see a situation. And if I'm not careful, immediately my mind will start to project. We start to build up theories. This happens because this person is mean and this person being mean, try to harm this other person. and etc etc we are uh, constantly projecting and the root of all these projections and expectations is our misunderstanding uh, regarding the way our reality does exist or does not exist as we think it does to be brief and come back on that, uh, on that topic, uh, maybe later, uh, the way we perceive uh, phenomena in our reality is often with a sense of self inherent existence. I look at the glass, I look at the computer, I look at the screen, and uh, automatically, without any doubt, these objects are existing from their own side. I do not feel, I do not sense, I do not have this uh, conviction that these objects are the direct result of causes I have accumulated in the past. I perceive them as if they would exist from their own side. And here is the mistake. It is a mistake because none of these phenomena uh, are existing from their own sides. They are existing solely in interdependence with the causes I have accumulated in the past. I see things because I have created the causes for seeing them. If I would not have created the causes for seeing what I'm seeing, I would not see it. So, 
that is a fundamental uh, mistake. This is what we call the fundamental ignorance. And on the basis of that ignorance, everything else unfolds. Everything else, meaning uh, the way I project uh, on uh, any uh, phenomenon, uh, the way I'm afraid that things would take place in a way I don't want or I don't like. And consequently, we can say that the eight worldly dharma are um, deriving directly from this misconception. Thus, we could say that the key to bring back a certain peace within our own mind the key to uh, free our mind from these worldly preoccupations is the correct understanding of how truly our reality exists. And again, of course, there is the understanding of what I'm talking about, uh, the understanding of books, the understanding of teachings on this topic, on this matter, and there is a, a realization of it. The realization of it, meaning to change radically our way of perceiving the reality, not just following a certain uh, logic or following a certain analysis, but spontaneously. This is what comes out of the realization of the true nature of reality. Till then, of course, it is the result of our uh, analysis. So we need to get used to analyze, analyzing uh, our reality in the correct way or in the way which is the closer to uh, the wisdom taught by the Buddha. This implies on a daily basis, and again, not just once or twice a day, but as many times as possible, to uh, reflect upon the nature of our reality. To hold on a little bit the development of our day, and to observe, observe phenomena and observe how we are clinging, how we are seizing these uh, phenomena. I see the cup, I see the screen. Immediately, I know that I have a certain grasping towards uh, this phenomena. And I need to loosen up this grasping by understanding these phenomena exist as a projection of my own mind. We say like a reflection of the moon in the water. That reflection does not have any true inherent existence. It does not exist from its own. It exists in interdependence with something else. All phenomena that we are perceiving right now exist in interdependence with our mind and the karmic seeds, karmic potentials, causes that we have accumulated in the past. Would we realize this, the eight worldly dharma would disappear. They would simply disappear because there would be no ground for them to exist. Why I have such attachment for uh, material things and fear of losing them? Because I think they are existing from of, of their own. Because I project a certain amount of uh, desire, I project a certain amount of expectations outside in this reality. And I do that because I do not understand how this reality works. Either I project or I'm afraid of this and that, or I remain in peace, might not change my reality as it appears to me now, but it can change or not 
the way I uh, project on it. Since the way I project on it is creating the causes for what I will experience in the future, I better be careful about what I'm creating. I better understand what is happening in my mind so not to create further causes, negative causes, or causes which will bring me uh, any type of unpleasant uh, experience in the future. It all comes down again to what we are expecting in this life. The understanding of the very nature of our life. Is it just I'm waking up in the morning, taking my coffee, going to job, working, coming back home, having my dinner, little situations, events, and going to bed and waking up the next day? and so on and so forth, my entire life? Or is there a deeper meaning behind? Is there a deeper motivation behind? Is there a deeper understanding of the nature of my life? And if there is a deeper understanding, then I need to look behind the curtain. I need to look what this reality is made of and engage into the proper um, considerations, the proper analysis of this reality and how I perceive it and why I perceive it as such. The idea is, of course, to transform radically, uh, to, to transform by the root, from the root, the way I perceive uh, all the phenomena around me, me included, as a matter of fact. When we talk about phenomena, we are not talking just about what we see outside. We are talking about everything, the, what we wear, uh, how we look like, how we perceive ourselves is also part of our reality. And how much time are we spending uh, looking at ourselves, how we look like and how we would like to look to the others. And if we have a little pimple here and if we have a little thing here, some people will jump in the air if they see they have gray hair. Uh, for me, it's too late since quite some time. So there is a lot of considerations taking our mind away from the practice, taking our mind away from uh, the right motivation in life. The right motivation being how we can help the others, how we can involve ourselves in helping the others. Why? Because we can clearly understand that the others are in the same boat as ourselves. They have the same type of suffering. They have the same type of misunderstanding. And not understanding the law of causality, not understanding the Buddha's teaching, they are uh, creating for themselves more and more suffering. Everybody wants happiness. Yes, this is what human and other beings in the samsara are looking for happiness except that we are not defining happiness in the same way and we are not understanding the way to reach this happiness uh, correctly many people will mix up pleasure with happiness and pleasure by nature is very transitory it lasts a few seconds, a few minutes, according to the type of pleasure that we are talking about. This has nothing to do with happiness. The real happiness, true happiness, is long-lasting. 
is established within the mind in a way that cannot be disturbed by any uh, external phenomena and any internal phenomena neither by the way because we would have for that purpose reached mental pacification so if we are really looking for happiness we need to understand the mechanism of real happiness we need to understand the mechanism of causality how things how phenomena are appearing to us how they are or how, how they appear to interfere with my own mind which is not the case it's my mind getting disturbed by what it perceives many times we say ah this situation makes me angry this person makes me angry this is not an outside uh, possibility. There is a situation we are confronted with, either a situation or a person, and our mind not being able to remain in peace, develop anger. Nobody else from the outside can make us angry if we do not agree in a way, if we do not let it happen except that most of the time we are not even aware of what is happening in, to our own mind and we are realizing later on how angry we have been for already several minutes. We didn't have this type of awareness which otherwise would have enabled us to see the anger coming. Anger usually does not appear at once. It started with a type of irritation. That irritation based on impatience uh, will grow, will start to itch inside till there is a type of anger arising. So we need to become aware of our minds in order to see the smallest things appearing which uncontrolled will give rise to major disturbances. And when we are overwhelmed by major disturbances, we can act in a way, we can speak in a way which generates a lot of negativity. A lot of negative causes which we will have to experience in the future. So, we are generating our own unhappiness. We are generating our own suffering. Right now, right here, what I perceive is the result of causes I have accumulated in the past. I can observe them. I can see how they are appearing and uh, what they are. That's the best when I say as they are is to recognize that all these appearances are void of any self-inherent existence. They are manifestation of my own mind. They appear from causes which are carried by my mind within my own mind, giving an image, giving a cinema, giving a movie within my own mind. If I can see this, then I'm coming out of ignorance. If I'm coming out of ignorance, there is no phenomena which can really disturb me because I will understand its root, because I will understand its lack of self-inherent existence. And if it lack any self-inherent existence, it exists only within my reality, within my mind. Why to bother then? I gain this, okay, good, I have it. I lose that, okay, good, I don't have it anymore. Either I have it, either I don't have it is a result of past accumulated causes. Why to be unhappy? Either way, somebody praises you, somebody criticizes you, 
what does it change for your reality? What does it change in your life? If somebody likes your way, the way you work, the way you talk, the way you teach, the way you act, it's good for them. I mean, it's good for them if what you are teaching or what you are doing is good, of course, if it is a good example. If somebody does not see it this way and criticize you and say that uh, actually um, they don't think your motivation is good and they don't think your work is good and they see only the negative aspect of all what you are doing, of course, there is a part of us which can be sorry for them, not so f sorry for ourselves. Our mind should not be disturbed by it. Sorry for them because we understand how causality works. And we understand that if somebody is uh, actually generating negative thoughts, negative words, negative actions, then they are accumulating for themselves some negative uh, result in their future. So either we have any kind of um, fame, famous uh, situation, or we are subject to infamous situation should not change anything within your own mind. What does it really change? I mean, if we are thinking away from materialistic consideration, because people like us, we have more happiness, because people don't like us, we have less happiness? Definitely not. So, according to this understanding, the mind remains in peace. And this is close to true happiness. When we are talking about true happiness, it is a completely pacified state of mind away from this worldly consideration, away from uh, any circumstances, any words, any appearance, to which we would give any kind of power to disturb our mind. Something happens in our life, let's say somebody bump into our brand new car. It's a fact. It's a situation. We can observe it. If we have the possibility to make the paper with the person and solve the problem, blah, 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 let's do it. If we just notice it later on and nobody let a little note or a little phone number, it is like that. To become angry out of this situation, will not change the situation. You can look at the bump on your car. You can see that there is a mark. Well, there is a mark. You can immediately understand that if there is a mark, it means you have created the causes for that mark to be there. Because if you would not have created the causes for that mark to be there, there would not, not be any mark. Yes? So on one side, you understand the nature of what you are observing and on the other side out of this understanding the mind remains peaceful and this process needs to take place throughout the day throughout the night so that your mind is as less disturbed as possible the eight worldly dharma, the eight worldly concerns, or the eight worldly considerations, preoccupations, are to remind us not to let our thoughts be to be taken away without our notice, and to do not allow any disturbing mental factor to uh, poison our mind. 
That way, we are not creating any further negativity. That way, we can observe the unfolding of past accumulated causes without to generate further negativity. If you can combine that way of thinking, observing, pondering upon your reality with uh, some uh, more formal practices, like um, to recite some mantras which have the possibility to purify negative uh, karma, negative causes accumulated in the past. If you combine that way of thinking with some practices like the six perfections, um, doing your best to develop these perfections in your daily life then your future is a future of happiness. It will be a type of happiness of this world and it will, cre it will create the causes for uh, progressing on the spiritual path uh, towards liberation of the samsara and toward enlightenment. Quite a certain amount of time I hear people saying, I have no time in my daily uh, schedule to do some formal practice because I have a job which takes me a lot of um, energy, because I have uh, kids, uh, because I have family in a way that does not um, give me much time. I cannot sit and meditate for hours. I cannot uh, take sadhanas for hours. Some days it is limited to a few minutes how I can really uh, concentrate on the text. This happened. This happened because we have um, often a lifestyle which is uh, very busy. But we should not think that the formal practices are the only part of the practice. The main part of the practice actually stands out of the formal practice. Why? Because we are in daily life. I'm not talking about monastics. Uh, monks and nuns might have much more time to do formal study and to do formal practice, some pujas, some retreats. There is more time dedicated for that. And it is very good. On the other side, maybe in a monastery without a kids, family and job, they might be a little bit less um, stimulated to uh, practice the six perfection on a daily basis, which outside of a monastery, we have a bit less time for the formal practices, but we have plenty of opportunities to uh, develop the practice of the six perfection. Of from the, the generosity point of view, the development of patience, uh, the development of um, uh, ethical values and concentration and meditation up to wisdom, uh, and uh, all of it uh, boosted by this uh, joyous effort. This we can practice anytime. We don't need to be in um, Gompa. You don't need any temple. You don't need uh, you don't need Dorje and Bell for uh, any uh, practices of such. This is a practice which can and should be integrated to our daily life. By applying the six perfections, by reciting mantras on on the go, I would say yes. You have to, of course, if you you have a work on the computer, you have a specific work to do, which require some thinking. It's not convenient to recite mantras, but if you are uh, walking from your job to your car, from your car to your home, you have some time. 
It can be two minutes, it can be 10 minutes, you take the public transportation, you have plenty of time. Out of this time, you can recite mantras. You don't need to have the mala in the hand and say the mantra loud. You can say the mantra with a whispering voice and, uh, and uh, secretly. Uh, this you can do anytime, almost. You see somebody, you see a situation at your job, within your family, how you perceive this situation, how you react to this situation is the practice. I would say that the core of the practice is in our daily life. And the other practices that we are doing are to uh, strengthen our motivation, strengthen, strengthen our uh, concentration or concentrative ability, are to accumulate merits out of which we can improve our view our wisdom yes the development of wisdom depends on the merits we have accumulated or we are accumulating sometime even through even though we are we are practicing a lot we are meditating a lot we don't see a lot of different so we don't see a lot of changes in our mind why because we don't have enough merits merits can be accumulated in in, in various way ways uh, it can be uh, accumulated by uh, the practice of prostrations to the 35 buddhas for example but it can also be uh, accumulated by liberating animals by helping people in the hospital, in the hospice, in, in any situation or in any place where people need help, if you engage in providing help, is an accumulation of merit. As a matter of fact, it's an accumulation of positive karma. And because we are engaged on the, on the Dharma path, we dedicate this positive karma for the sake of all sentient beings and they become merits. So you see, within our daily life, we can practice a lot. We can, we should recognize that every moment we are aware of our reality, we can practice. And when we recognize that we are not aware, we have not been aware till this point, then let's set a kind of awareness. Now on, for the next seconds, minutes, I want to be aware, aware of every step, aware of everything I see. I remain in the present moment. I remain in the capacity to be an observer of that reality which appears fakely to me as self-inherently existent but which i know is not as we mentioned already several times in the past from one day to another we might not uh, generate emptiness uh, the realization of emptiness but what we can do is to constantly remind ourselves that the way we perceive the phenomena is not correct. So you are already somehow destabilizing this fake understanding of reality. Fake in the sense that I believe it is self inherently existing. But no, wait a minute. I have read that this is not the case. I have meditated already and I, have came, I came to the conclusion that this reality, which appears to be self inherently existing, does not. I'm not completely sure yet how it really exists because I don't have higher realizations, because I don't have necessary wisdom yet for it. But what I know is it does not exist the way I thought until now. So we already. In uh, somehow work on modifying our perception. And this you can do from now on. 
Because again, I hear people saying, oh, well, the realization of emptiness, it is so far, I'm not able to do that, I'm, I don't have the wisdom for that, I don't have maybe the merit to change completely my perception, so what can I do? I'm overwhelmed by my reality. But already, if you start to believe and understand that the way you perceive the reality is not correct, you are going in the good direction. You are giving less ground to this uh, fake understanding. You are undermining this fake understanding. And whenever you are undermining this fake uh, perception, you start to think properly. You start to distance yourself from what is perceived. You give less weight to what is perceived. And you have less risk to see the eight worldly lama to take part, to take place, to appear and disturb you. Why? Because to take one, like, like uh, criticism, you observe a situation in which you are criticized or people criticizing you or writing bad things about you. You look at it and you understand, you start to understand. What I observe now is the result of past accumulated causes. I might have criticized other heavily in the past, and now I am criticized, okay? Well, that's the deal. I have done a certain amount of things which were not very nice, and now I can observe some situation which at first are not very nice, are not pleasant. Why they are not pleasant? because I give them a certain importance which they have. So then progressively, they have less weight and they disturb you much less. So if we take again the eight worldly consideration, like uh, seeking for, help, for happiness and being afraid of suffering, seeking for fame uh, and being afraid of um, uh, insignificance, uh, seeking for praise and being afraid of criticism or blame and uh, um, seeking for gain and being afraid of loss, of losing, these worldly consideration will progressively lose their way as you understand correctly or in a better way, in a clearer way, how your reality truly exists. It exists, your reality exists. Yes, you can grab the cup and the cup as a type of existence. We are not saying that the reality does not exist at all, yes? It has a type of existence, but it exists according, based on the causes you have accumulated. It exists within your mind. It exists within your uh, consciousness. Like a dream. When you enter into your dream, what you perceive into the dream does have a type of existence. Yes, you enter into the kitchen of your dream, you take the cup, you take the fork, you take whatever, it exists. Yes, because you touch it, because you interact with it. It has a type of conventional existence but then you wake up and you understand that ultimately whatever you have perceived within this dream state was a creation of your own mind a complete creation of your own mind not 50 percent not 60 percent of your own mind and then something would exist no 100% of all what you perceived and the way you perceived it was coming, was created from and within your own mind. Fact is, there is not much difference between the dream state and what we call this reality. If you understand this, and if you meditate on this in order to 
increase the understanding, develop the understanding. Then somehow the eight worldly dharma will not affect you anymore. The eight worldly dharma will remain for what they are, an illusion. Either you gain something on the material world, either you lose it, it's part of an illusion made by and for your own mind. That's it. This was about the eight worldly dharma and how to work on it and how to uh, improve uh, your understanding of reality in order to uh, progress towards happiness, ease inside yourself. Okay, good. So we have um, listened well, thought carefully. It is important to dedicate whatever positive attitude we have generated for the sake of all sentient beings, for the sake of the path, of the progress on the path, so that it becomes merit, so that it supports our spiritual. Um, development and for that we uh, can uh, recite the, the prayer which are helping us to focus on the process of merits transformation if you have questions related to this teaching uh, tomorrow there will be question answers I encourage you to come back if you have the opportunity or to connect uh, as I see, there are uh, seven other people connected uh, online uh, and uh, ask your questions. If we can discuss about it and answer them, that can be good. Okay?